Definitive's game has generally been more the cinema route, but Definitive has come out with this, The Demand. The Demand series sets out to maintain much of Definitive's great cinema DNA, but to also achieve a little bit more in the realm of music. So if you're a cinephile, but you also really love your music listening too, take a good look at this new Demand series. Hey guys, welcome back. It's Luke here with Gramophone. And today we're gonna to talk about what happens when a speaker manufacturer breaks conventions. Before you is almost the entire definitive demand series, a relatively new product from a company that many of us in the industry know very well, and you may know as well. Definitive's generally been known for producing bipole speakers, a speaker that literally fires two different poles, forwards toward the listener, as any speaker does, but also has rear-mounted drivers intentionally meant to fire into the wall. It can be made to sound really, really big. And that's precisely what good cinema is, right? Big explosions, big effects, big ships, or whatever's going on on screen flying over. Definitive is clearly setting out to do something a little bit different with this speaker, but still maintains some of their roots, as every speaker manufacturer does. Let's take a little deeper look together and find out why this is a great speaker for those who already know what they're going to get from a Definitive, but want a little extra musicality baked in and a gorgeous, hyper-modern design to go with it. Keeping with the theme of surprises when it comes to audio gear, what is the single most surprising piece of gear that you bought? and tried in your system, and in the sense that you were pleasantly surprised by. Let me know in the comments down below. But you all know the drill. Before we do this, click that subscribe button and that bell notification icon because a lot of great highlights are on the way with some good reviews baked in and I don't want you to miss it. And while you're down there, you'll see all the links to our social media accounts, so be sure to follow us there too. Now then, let's define the definitive demand. So these are a little different for DevTech, but what's the rest of the history? What are we coming from? Well, in a word, DevTech is the progeny of Sandy Gross. Sandy Gross, perhaps you've heard that name, is a very famous speaker designer, and he's one of the original trio that founded Polk, and that's a name almost all of us know. But he moved on from Polk to create DevTech, and that was going to be his next level product, that next echelon up in audio. And in DevTech, he started the standard for things like the bipolar technology, integrated subwoofers, that big whopping soundstage, and great cinema sound. Now, while the demand here is a little bit different, you're certainly going to see traces of where that DNA remains in the overall design. And that's what I want to focus on highlighting today. How to stick to your roots while producing a different shoot, if you will. Same family of trees, little different species. So we can talk about the theory of it all day long, but what are the specific features of the demand series that both are a tip of the hat to that traditional deaf tech design and as well a departure from it? Your eyes probably drawn not only to those beautiful carbon woofers in the towers over there, but probably to that uniquely offset tweeter right on the top. DevTech's pretty much always use an aluminum tweeter, and they're actually one of the better ones at doing it. Because of that offset, you're gonna get less front baffle reflections, which means for a smoother, more balanced sound with better image, and less overall sharpness, brightness, are those things that tend to cause fatigue because you're not doubling up on those fatiguing reflections. On top of that, there's even more aluminum. Now this whole front baffle is a solid piece of aluminum. It doesn't just make for a very modern, very pretty speaker that I think looks really cool, but because it's also more rigid, again, same effect. Less vibrations, less rattle, more solid, more stable. If you've got a more modern aesthetic in your home especially, oh, these are gonna work really well. But they're not so overstated that they would overpower anything else and not work. Pop the grills back on these, and then they just disappear. Keeping with the theme of aluminum, but moving on, take a look at the mid-bass driver in both the center and the bookshelf here, or the dedicated mid-range in the tower over there. But see that big phase plug in the center? That achieves a couple different things. This is actually a double surround design woofer. This helps with overall woofer balance and speed. And that big phase plug, much like the lens of the aluminum tweeter, DevTech's keeping the same theme going on here, helps with wave dispersion into your room. A speaker is only as good as the sound it can get into your room, obviously, 
and how well it does at producing that. Having a speaker simply make noise and shout it into the room in any whichever direction doesn't cut it. You've got to make sure it's propagating in a way that's conducive to a good musical experience. And DevTech uses lensing very well and they've employed it in almost every part of their speaker, from the tweeter to the mid-range. Let's slide down a little further, but now we're going to go over to the towers because this is where we really start to differ. The tower is, of course, a three-way speaker, so you can imagine it's going to be a little bit more accurate in bass and in mid-range frequencies for that reason. And it is. But take a look at those dedicated woofers. Nice, gorgeous carbon fiber that sounds as good as it looks. Yeah, we know what a carbon woofer can do from some other speakers that we featured, and DevTech uses it to great advantage here as well. They're tight, they're controlled, and man, they're nice to look at. Look at the massive passive radiators on the bottom of the towers. Dual radiators, one on each side on both of these towers for a total of four big old bass drivers. By just employing a more traditional design here, but with that DevTech design language, we're keeping these big, but we're sacrificing, and rightfully so maybe, just a little bit of bass into your room for a more musical sound. The demand over the BP, I might say, does feature polypropylene capacitors and air core inductors in the design of the crossover. Basically what I'm trying to tell you, it's better. And good crossover design is just as important as good speaker driver and good cabinet design. So what's it like actually listening to, owning, having, experiencing the demand? I'm going to answer that two ways. For those of you who know a little something about DevTech, who maybe know the BP series sound, or any other DevTech product for that matter, it's a DevTech, but you're going to give up a little bit of that maybe BP series big, or just bass output, and you're going to get better imaging, especially because of that offset tweeter, good waveguide, and that phase plugged mid-range, all specifically focusing on those little fine points that make for better music listening, right? Yes. And for those of you who heard that and are going, what? Think about where you lean more on that equation. Some of us are going to be more specific about the music we're listening to. And some of us are going to be more specific about the home theater experience we're having. If you care more about cinema, and especially if that's all you care about, look at a bigger output speaker like the BP. If you're more on the side of, I still want that, at least in part, but I'm more specific more exacting when it comes to listening to my music, look at the demand. It's still going to be more than likely big enough. It still has that death tech character, but it's bringing out those things I mentioned earlier more in your music. And let me leave you with this, a bit of a, a tiebreaker, if you will. This was shared with me by our engineer here at Gramophone, Gabriel, the man responsible for making sure that all the systems that we install are all operating and set up perfectly and he is a wizard at his job. Gabe, shout out to you for being awesome. Always slide in the direction of what you would prefer for music after doing some listening because it's for music that we are always more engaged and more critical. However, after hearing that, if you still feel like the demand may not be for you, I would encourage you to come in and do a listening test if we're nearby to you or there's still a grand variety of solutions here at Gramophone that would meet your needs. So feel free to shop. So then, if you're looking for a speaker in the entry-level hi-fi category that handles virtually all things pretty well, has gorgeous and especially modern styling, and comes from a heritage that we know makes a great home theater experience, but now aims a little bit closer to those musical dreams we have for our hi-fi systems, or if you don't really quite know yet, if you're looking for a good two-channel or a good multi-channel, but that can go any direction and be built upon in time, it's hard to do much better than the demand because they meet almost all the demands. Starting at a price of $4.99, the Definitive Demand Series has something for everybody. All of the products in this range are designed to fit into a wide range of rooms and to accommodate many different budgets. And you will find those showrooms in Timonium, Columbia, and Gaithersburg, Maryland, as well at Kitchen Design Center in Hunt Valley. 
And of course, the entire line is easily available on skybygramophone.com, where you can check out securely and get fast and free shipping straight to your door. That is a wrap on the demand series today, my friends. Thank you for sticking around. If you enjoyed this, please give us a like. We'd really appreciate it. Don't forget to answer the question of the day. What's the most surprising audio product that you've yet used in your system and why? And of course, thank you for watching. Be seeing you.